So people have asked me to do a tour of my studio, and um, it's very small, there's not that much to it, but I'll go ahead and give you a tour. Um, I did build it, I mean not with my own hands, but I put an addition on my house, not by myself, but I designed it kind of. I mean it had a limit, but there's certain things that I did. Um, so here, we'll start here at the, my wedging table. I built this wedging table like 18 years ago when I was pregnant, when I was like, there's my belly cast, when I was probably about that pregnant, like um, seven, eight months pregnant. And uh, I didn't know how to build anything really, but uh, I had tools and wood and stuff. I always had tools and wood. So uh, I just hacked together this wedging table. It's pretty strong. It's time for me to replace the canvas, but I'm just proud of it. I just really feel there's something about the fact that I built it when I was pregnant. Under that, I just have some random storage, just like boxes with some packing material, because you always need that. Here's my sink, which is just a laundry sink. It's pretty disgusting inside, but the theory is that I um, like have kind of like glazy, watery stuff that I collect um, and then like dry out. Like I'll take this out now and let it dry out and then I'll just throw it in the garbage. Um, and these guys should get hung up. We'll clean as we go here. So, ah, okay. Uh, here I have my, um, shoot, sieve, uh, and I actually never use this one really, but, um, I use this one all the time, and then these little ones I use a lot. So I use them for if I'm, like, you know, my glaze is all funky and chunky, and I just, I don't want to run it through the whole thing again, because that would be cleaning the whole thing, but it's really easy to just do a small batch into... A smaller bucket so that's I do that kind of often okay then I also built this I'm very proud of this too it's like a little table um, right now it's filled with stuff that didn't make it into the last uh, firing round um, but the thing that I really like about it that I'm happy with that really worked out pretty well is that um, I have this dolly underneath with my glaze buckets on it and I can fit two, four, six, eight, ten glaze buckets and they just slide right under it. So somehow I did a little magic when I built this thing and I did it just to the right height. So that's exciting. Here's just like extra buckets and I have a couple extra glazes um, that just go on these little mini little dollies things. These guys. These guys. I like to keep everything. Here we go. Can you see that? Everything off the floor. Almost everything's on wheels. Almost nothing flat on the floor. Just makes it a lot easier to clean. Even, okay, so I have three of these racks. And um, these racks are so awesome. They fit two, they're 24 inches deep. So these four foot wide uh, wear boards, I can fit two of them deep. And then they have varying height. So they're all, like, if I have taller pots, then I can just um, leave one, one out. There's the whole back area. It goes all the way up. It's open to the top. So, anyway, those things are great. This is the very best um, design, I think, for wear rack. Um, I've never seen anything that I like better, except that there's, you could do these um, metal bars across that you just slide uh, wear boards across, and that's also very good. But I don't have the depth in here for that because I have such a narrow studio. It's only 12 feet uh, wide. So it's, my studio is 12 by 25. So, okay. And these, and these big carts, these big uh, wear racks are also on wheels. I never move them. I don't know really why we put them on wheels, but we thought put everything on wheels. <laughs> Maybe so if there's an earthquake, they'll just kind of like roll across <laughs> the studio. Okay. Uh, when you first walk into my studio, there's like, here's like my like dry towels and like clean towels and clean clothes for when I'm ready to change out my shirt. I always like have like a shirt that I wear for the week or so and I just kind of keep wearing that shirt and I wear it, I'm wearing my like studio clothes right now and I just wear it over whatever I'm wearing so then I can quickly kind of just go back to life and be relatively clean. Now this area I did not 
I need to uh, clean up. But uh, this technically is my bench grinder area, but look at all that stuff. How would anybody ever use that bench grinder? When I use it, um, if there's anything at all on this top shelf here, it all just kind of like vibrates off. So I, right now that's not being used. It's just kind of a yucky storage area. But I do have some tools that hang over here on the side. That's kind of nice. I like hanging tools to find them. But what I do use a lot is my, um, well not that often, but if I need to use my bench grinder and I can't, I just use this Dremel tool. I, I just love... I love this Dremel tool. I, I don't know what I did before I had one. Okay, here's a slab roller that I bought almost a year ago and I still never used, but I finally got it set up because I didn't have a table for it. And I know almost nothing about working with slabs, so I can't tell you very much about that. But I'm so glad that I have it. I bought it on sale. Okay, so then here's where I keep most of my like pots that are either bisked and ready to be glazed or glazed and ready to be boxed. So they're over here closer to my kiln and just kind of works out that way. Wet pots over there um, and or like greenware over there and then bisque and fired pots here. And underneath is just kind of like storage stuff and tools and things like that. And, um, and up above are like things like uh, extra soap pumps and oil dispensers and uh, teapot handles and things like that. And then the last section is kind of blocked in right now, but it's my glaze mixing area. And it's just another, so I have three of these big wear racks. And this is another um, one. It's got Raku equipment up on top and then just all the materials. Some of them I keep in containers and some are smaller, I just keep in the bags. And then over here we have my clay recycling zone, which is uh, not the prettiest part of my studio, but there's a bunch of clay that's all piled up, and these buckets generally should be wet, but this is totally dried out now. And that goes here, which, oh good, this is still soft. This is my pug mill. So um, I just went through a whole firing cycle, so I have not been dealing with this whole area. It gets blocked in. And so yeah, so that's my pug mill. It's, there's just a um, plaster bat here that I take the wet clay out of the bucket, slap it on the bat, monitor it for a while. It's right next to this huge open window right now. Not the best. <laughs> Dries out kind of fast there. Um, I store my clay. Oh, here's my electric kiln. It's just a 1027. And um, it's got computerized. Most of the time, I just put high, fast, cone 6, fast, or cone 07, fast. I like the fast cycle. So um, that's that. There's like, you know, whatever things I don't use back here, broken kiln shelves, and who knows what's back there. I have kind of a funky system where my fan, I have a fan back there. I have an enviro vent underneath the kiln that goes out the wall. Maybe you can see that, yeah. And then there's the fan, so I have this ruler, <laughs> this yardstick. If I want to turn on my fan, I go like that. <laughs> and to turn it off, just down. <laughs> so, okay, there we go. There's that. Then this is kind of a cool feature of my studio is right here's my nice double doors so I have like a lot of sunlight coming in but the cool feature is that well I'm not sure how cool it is I could have probably done this differently but this was my bright idea was hey let's um, leave some space under the door so I can just see so I can just squeegee the the water and the clay straight out under the door. Bye bye. <laughs> the problem is it just winds up kind of on the ground right here. So then, so then on the concrete patio, then there's a little grate here that catches leaves. And then I take this piece out with a screwdriver or something, and and um, it's like a little clay catcher, you know. And then it goes out. So there's some kind of a mesh screen in there or something. And then, oh, the one thing I didn't show you is that I have one of these Gleco traps under the sink. 
So anything that I try to, not to get anything down the sink, anything solid, but if anything does go down there, then I can I clean that out about once a year. Seems like all I need. So, and it can be nasty and wet and disgusting down there. I just got a ton of clay delivered today, and uh, was, I love moving. I love moving a ton of clay. There's something so burly about it. Me and Edward from Georgie's moved it. That was fun. And uh, this clay is like gold. So I say I got a ton of gold delivered today. Solid gold. Dark chocolate trail mix from Georgie's. Best clay ever. Well, not probably not ever, but I love it. I think that's all you need to know about my studio. Not everything's great. Like, for some reason, the contractor put the heater, like, up by the ceiling. <laughs> that's not the best place for a heater. Uh, he really liked heaters up by the ceiling. So, um... Yeah, I guess that's, I'm not seeing anything else that you need to know that would be special. But, yeah, I guess that's it. Oh, my kiln shelves. I just lean them up right against the kiln. I know some people have, like, great systems for their kiln, kiln shelves, but mine work just so great just leaning up against the kiln. I have the short shelves. Um, let's see. The short shelves are here so they're the ones that actually touch the kiln and then these guys the bigger ones are outside so mostly i yeah i load the big ones out in first and then the short ones half size shelves and then i ha i try to keep one clean chair for guests in the studio so they have somewhere to sit that's not totally disgusting all right there's my whoa 12 minute <sighs> studio tour